Okay, so the first thing we'll look at is the canned reports. They're in various places in the system. For example, depending on your role center, I'm logged in, I believe as business manager, I'd have to check. But if we go to a trial balance here, we have the option for a trial balance, detail or summary. Now I've done nothing to this report. This is out of the box. You can open it and you can see there's different parameters and filters that you can choose. So you can choose to show all accounts, only accounts with balances or accounts with activities. And then it gives you some other options. So a new page per account, which for most people that would turn into a pretty massive report. Print transaction detail. So that would give you the actual detailed transactions within each account for the date range. It also allows you to, if you do have additional currencies within your business central, you can turn this on and it will print the balances in the additional currency. You have filters within the GL that allow you to pick if you want to filter this particular report by a specific GL number or range of numbers, an account category. There's numerous ways that you can filter this data. And obviously, depending on the filters and options that you choose, what's going to be presented is different. So you also have to set a date filter. So you're telling the system, I want to see my trial balance as of these dates. And then in this particular system, these are the two global dimensions that have been set. So if I wanted to run my trial balance, let's say, and only look at entries tagged with the admin department dimension, I have that ability as well. And then again, you can get even further into deeper detail into your filters. And you can filter for specific document types or within the general ledger entries themselves, you can have the report filtered for numerous other things. So if we leave it set for August and we preview, so you do have multiple options here as well, which exist in most places in the system where reports are, you have the option to preview. So that'll present the report on your screen. You also have the option to print. And then on the send to button, you even have more options. So we can tell the system, you know what, I want this report generated as a PDF document, as a Word document, as an Excel document. And in this case, you also have the option to schedule it. And when you click on the schedule, the system will create a job queue entry automatically and allow you to set parameters so that the report can run at a specific set time. This comes in extremely handy if you're running a report such as an inventory valuation report. Those reports, depending on your business, generally take quite a long time to run because they're cycling through a lot of data and transactions. So in most cases, people will definitely have those reports scheduled. So now if we just look at one of the other reports that we mentioned, was customer item statistics. Again, we have some of the similar options. Now this print to Excel option does not get presented on all reports. Basically, if there's reports with, I believe it's with calculated values that it will not, but you can choose the print to Excel. You still have the option to produce the report as an Excel document, but the two reports are not the same. So the one that is the print to Excel. So sorry about that. This one will give you an Excel workbook with the data. If you choose the Microsoft Excel document, you will actually get a document formatted that mimics the actual report preview itself. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. We just have a look and see what the next one was on our list. It was back order report.
So we can run an inventory sales back order report, which is extremely handy for companies that are doing distribution. And it allows them to have a snapshot of what sales orders they still have in the system that have back ordered inventory on them. And again, we have filters. So we have filters on the item table. We can filter for a specific item, an inventory posting group, for example, or any number of other filters from the item. We can also filter by a specific bin, department, date, or location, which is a popular one. So if you have multiple warehouses, you can run this report and say, okay, for today, I just want to see what my back orders are for the East Warehouse, for example. And then further to that, from the sales order line, you can select a specific shipment date. So show me what back orders I have from orders that should have shipped on September 8th. So what sales orders are still outstanding in the system that have back ordered inventory? This report comes in really handy, like I said, for the warehouse when you're receiving product. So if I got a shipment in today, I might want to run this report for the particular items that I received on that shipment so that I can quickly see which sales orders are outstanding that I can now fulfill because I've received inventory into the system. Now we'll look at the aged reports. So if we start with the aged accounts payable report, Again, you get an options page. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. So the first thing in the options is what date do I want this aged as of? For whatever reason, we have August 16th in here. That may be the work date in the system, I'm not sure. But then it also allows you options for the aging method. So you can age by the due date, by the transaction date, or by the document date. So in some cases, especially on the purchasing side, you'll have a document date on a purchase invoice that is, in most cases, equal to the date of the vendor's invoice that they've sent you. So they may have dated their invoice September 1st, and maybe we're posting it on September 9th. So our posting date would be September 9th, but the document date would be September 1st. So it also does allow you to age as of the document date. I'm going to quickly run this just to demonstrate what it looks like. So I had it aged as of, I believe it was due date, and 30 days was the length of my aging periods. So basically, this is what my report is going to look like. I didn't choose detail. I just wanted it summarized, and I chose my aging buckets to be 30 days. So now I have what's current what's up to 30 days, 31 to 60, and then over 60 days. So we'll change that so we can have a look at what one small change will do if I want the length of my aging periods now to be 60 days, and I preview the report. You can now see it's changed my aging buckets. So you have the flexibility to change how you view this report depending on what your aging buckets are. You can also show if it's overdue by a certain number of days, you can set that. So maybe I want my aging buckets to be 60 days, but I want to see anything that's overdue by 35 days. You can enter that value in here. And then you have some more options. So again, print amount and vendors currency. So if you have vendors that you pay in Canadian dollars or Euro or anything like that, if you turn that on, it will print the amounts in their currency. If you want to see show all for overdue by vendor, print detail is also extremely powerful. So when we turn that on and we run this same report, let's just change this back to 30 days. And your date entries are the same as they are anywhere else in the system. Basically your number and then whether it's a D for day or an M for month. And now if we preview, it's going to take a little bit longer to run because now we've asked for detail. So now in this case, we've got our aging buckets back to 30 days. But now we have the detail. And because I ran it for due date, 
I have a due date column. If I had chosen transaction date, then it would have the transaction date here. And if I chose document date, then obviously it would be the document date. But this gives us the full detail. So our invoice number, the vendor's invoice number, and of course, the values. Now, we do have the print to Excel again on this report. So if we have a look at it and we do the print to Excel and we select print, we basically get the report all formatted nicely. That was on the print. And then we also get an Excel workbook. So as I said, it's basically the data. Not very pretty, but it's there. And then if we go back and we choose the other option, we turn this one off and we say, send to Excel. Again, it'll take a couple of minutes, but just to demonstrate the difference between the two reports. So when we open this one now, you can see that it's formatted more like your PDF report. So one last thing on that aged accounts payable, which is also a powerful filter that you can put on, especially for accounts payable. You can filter by payment method. So if you want to see only the aging for vendors that you pay by check, for example, you can set that filter. If you only wanted to see specific posting groups, you can set that filter. So you have a lot of flexibility, even though these are canned reports, depending on the options and filters that you put on, you can get many, many different results for your different needs. And I think the inventory valuation, we'll quickly look at that one, and then I wanna get into account schedules because that's the fun stuff. So inventory valuation, again, you're gonna choose a day and say I want the value of my inventory at, let's say, August 31st. You have options to break it down. If you have variance on your items, you can break it down by variant. If you want it broken down by location because you have multiple locations, you can turn that on as well. Again, if you use additional reporting currency, you have the option to enable that. And then again, we're down to a ton of filters. So specific items, inventory posting groups, many, many, many different options from your item table that you can set filters on this. And again, you can filter by location. So this one, the breakdown by location, will show you for each item what your inventory quantities and values are listed by location. If you set a location filter, then the report is only going to produce for that particular location. So I hope that's been helpful and given everybody a little bit of a better idea of what you can do with some of the canned reports within the system.